Hey guys, how are you going? It's Sam here from Core Electronics and today we're going to be taking a look at the different Teensy boards, the different models, what's the differences between them, um, some of the features, some of the specs and which one's going to be right for your project. Now if you're here wondering what is Teensy, I don't know what you're talking about, then check out our What Is Teensy tutorial, it'll run you through the basics of what these awesome fantastic boards are and you know a few things you can do with them. But today we're just going to be yeah, taking a look at the four different models of Teensy that we have available as the current gen models. Um, so we've got the Teensy LC, we've got the Teensy 3.2 and then the TNC 3.6. Now there's actually a 3.5 as well, um, but the 3.5 and the 3.6 are exactly the same board. Uh, appearances wise, most of the specs are pretty much the same. They've just got a slightly different uh, chip there, um, both running ARM Cortex architecture, um, but a few slight sort of performance differences, but the exact same looking board. So. Let's start with the Teensy LC. Now we call this guy the, the junior member of the, uh, the Teensy family, but that's probably underselling it a bit because it's still an awesome board. For $24, you get an ARM Cortex uh, processor, an MO Plus processor, I think it is, uh, running at 48 megahertz, awesome. Uh, 27 in out pins, all, uh, you know, all broken out onto headers here. You've got... Uh, 8K of flash, 62K, sorry, 62K of flash, um, 8K of RAM kilobytes. Um, now the pin voltage on the LC is 3.3 volts. So the 3.2 and the 3.5 are 5 volt compatible, which means their system runs on 3.3 volts. Um, but, you know, so they can't output 5 volts, but if you accidentally input 5 volts to one of the pins, it's not going to destroy, it's not going to damage your chip, which is kind of cool. Um, it's a good safety feature if you're not used to working with 3.3 volt devices, but the Teensy is a bit more of a low cost model, doesn't have that uh, functionality, but still huge amount of horsepower in one of these guys. Now, the 3.2 shares a pretty similar form factor as the LC, in fact, we'll try and put them next to each other. So they're actually the same length and the same sort of pin layout, but you can see underneath the 3.2 has some additional uh, surface mount pads here. So you can connect like a surface mount uh, male header, like a double-sided double, double -sided one there, uh, if you like. And then you've also got some extra on both boards, some extra uh, through hole uh, pins here for extra male headers or things like that. Super breadboard friendly with stacks of IO pins, uh, but 3.2 brings in a bump to 96 uh, megahertz for the operating speed, which is awesome. The clock speed is huge on a board this size. Uh, you've got a bit of a spec bump as well for the storage. So you've got 64K of flash, that's heaps for plenty of projects. Uh, sorry, 64K of RAM, uh, 256K of flash storage, uh, 34 GPIO pins, 24 are broken out onto the other uh, mail headers on the side, 2K of EEPROM versus the LC, which only has 256 bytes of EEPROM. Um, and on board, you've got a native serial port, you've got I2C, you've got CAN, you've got SPY, um, you've got UART ports. I think there's three uh, TX and RX pin combinations on here, which is awesome. Now, the 3.5, so exact same board uh, as this guy here, um, is clocking some pretty powerful stuff. It's got an ARM Cortex M4 processor, clocked at 120 megahertz. Huge stuff from microcontroller. If you're wanting to do real-time processing with this, um, you know, tr uh, triggering interrupts and events in real time without any other software abstraction, like on, you know, say a Raspberry Pi or a Latte Panda or an operating system computer, then this guy is going to clock extremely well. Uh, as I said, 120 megahertz. You've also got a bump to 192K of RAM, 512K of flash, uh, 62 in outs. That's huge, that is massive. That's uh, about the same amount as your, um, your Arduino Mega 2560, which has been sort of a staple for a really uh, well fleshed out microcontroller for a lot of time, but the clock speed and uh, features on this guy blows it out of the water. You've got a native micro SD card, it's awesome. Paul uh, Stoffrigen has created the libraries that work beautifully, so simply, with all of the hardware features as well. So you don't have to go mucking around with uh, finding the registers and you know ports that are going to work with that. It's all there for you. You can program it in the Arduino IDE, which is pretty cool. You've got uh, a bump to 14 hardware timers, 20 PWM pins, 25 analog outputs, inputs, sorry, uh, which is fantastic. You've also got um, built-in USB 
uh, connectivity outside of the you know the micro uh, USB port, and then the 3.6 uh, breaks that out to a high speed USB port. I think it's four, it's about 420 megabits per second, something around that, which is ridiculous. There's like six um, hardware serial ports. You have TX and RX pins, SPI, R squared C, I2S. CAN bus Ethernet pins. There's built-in Ethernet pins on this guy, and the 3.6 is running at 180 megahertz. It's massive. 180 megahertz of awesome processing power for your next project. Under $50 for the top of the line Teensy board. Mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing stuff, which is really cool. Now, as I mentioned in the What is Teensy tutorial, one of the big things that makes the Teensy platform so attractive to makers is uh, Paul has built this fantastic collection of libraries which works out of the box with the Arduino platform. You can also load your own hex files onto these through the Teensy loader application. Uh, but you can also select the USB device type, which is cool. So say you want to make a MIDI controller, for example. Uh, MIDI operates through normally through TX or RX pins, but you can use MIDI over USB um, just through the USB port. It'll work straight away. You select that as your device profile. It'll show up on your computer as a MIDI device. You can map notes, events, actions to whatever you want. You can make a flight simulated joypad out of this. There's a joypad um, profile option. It can act as a hid device. You can make a keyboard. Uh, you can make, it supports audio because of the uh, huge amounts of RAM and processing speed on these guys. They support audio codecs. This is, uh, these have uh, built-in audio pins on them for stereo audio support. You can also get add-on uh, header boards for the other two boards and they'll work just fine. But this has it all built in. The new 3.5 and 3.6 boards are awesome. So really it depends on largely how much uh, processing resource you want, whether 48 megahertz, still awesome clock speed for a microcontroller of this size, you know, with 20 odd, uh, you know, in-out pins is gonna do the job, or whether you need something with the ridiculous number of in-out pins that your 3.5 or 3.6 has. Um, bear in mind, you could also add, um, you know, port expanders via serial buses, I2C or SPI, and get stupid amounts of in-out pins because there's a stupid amount of um, I squared C and serial and spy buses on board. Super, super awesome stuff. I love them, if you couldn't tell. So that's a quick look at the Teensy devices. You've got the Teensy LC, Teensy 3.2, Teensy 3.5, and Teensy 3.6, all under 50 bucks probably the most fully featured microcontrollers that are compatible with Arduino. And check out our next tutorial on using these boards with the Arduino YDA. It's gonna go through how to set it up, how to download uh, the Teensy Loader, Teensy Duino application that you'll need. It takes about two minutes to get these guys set up and we'll go through some example codes. So be sure to check that out. And some of our Teensy projects in the projects module. And I will see you next time, guys. Happy making.